Hi, my name is Mati Kovler. I'm a composer and artistic director of Floating Tower, an immersive music theater collective working with refugee and immigrant musicians. Um, I'm sitting here at the Adams Theater in Adams, Massachusetts, where we're producing a performance titled Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors that was inspired by Parajanov's iconic film um, with the same title. If you happen to be in town, in the Berkshires for the 4th of July weekend. Please come check out the performance July 1st and 2nd at the Adams Theater. Thank you. I'm sitting here with Dima Kwan, who's a wonderful New York-based actor, director uh, from Russia initially, who most recently played the lead part in um, a wonderful play by Lost and Found called Singing Windmills, where he plays the lead, the victim of Stalin's depression's famous Russian director Solomon Mikhoyles. And most recently, Dima and our mutual friend Anya Zisser worked with a group of Ukrainian teen refugees um, as part of a larger Lost and Found project on, um, on a play in which the refugees wrote their own script and Dima helped put together dramaturgically, and I was very moved by the work. So um, this is why I invited him to be a part to direct Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors and to be an integral part of this with us, with Floating Tower. And Dima, can you tell us a little bit more about your work with these teen refugees? And also, um, what does it feel like to be from Russia, working on a Ukrainian production right now, uh, a production that essentially is also a fundraiser for Razom for Ukraine. Um, it's uh, to say that I'm from Russia. Actually, it's um, it's disgusting at this time. I would say I don't know. I'm being a, like a Russophob <laughs> uh, for this time, and I would say I'm unfortunately I'm from Russia. That's actually why I'm here because I'm a political refugee. I'm here because the Putin. So I'm against Putin for all my life, and now people understand why, actually. And working with these teenagers from Ukraine was, uh, was a heartbreaking. And it was uh, also helpful for us and for them like to release their uh, trauma, at least for a, a little bit. It's how we feel we do something to support Ukraine something like what can we do we don't have a weapon so our weapons our voice and our what we do that's actually i'm happy to work with them and i'm happy to be a part of this project because it's also uh connected with the uh, ukraine yeah i i should also mention that um, unlike the lost and found production our project does not exclusively features ukrainians you know, we have musicians from Israel, Iran, Turkey, Greece, Palestinian musicians that are um, bonded by the commonality of them being immigrants and refugees from many places. And this production is very much community oriented. We are, the creative team is partially in North Adams and in Adams and the Berkshires. And we're taking part in this new, newly founded, you know, Adams Theater. So many community members also participate as a choir and they will have to learn some Ukrainian ancient folk stuff. We're also working with a New York based ethnomusicologist Brian Dalton who is teaching us some of the Ukrainian folk tunes and what's interesting is that many of these folk tunes are also in conversation with other world music. For instance, there are Vesnyankis in 6A or, or Kalatki, yeah, Kalatki or something. that are inspired <coughs> by, I guess, Persian music. Um, there's many Jewish elements in Ukrainian folklore that people may not be aware of. For instance, we just learned a song that features the words oy vey, clearly in Yiddish, and yet it's Ukrainian. So the goal of this production is to situate Ukraine in the larger landscape of world music and to, if you wish, to de-Russify the image of Ukraine, to, um, to, to, to illuminate the fact that Ukraine is so much more than just Russia's little satellite. And um, we're hoping it's going to be clear. But also, it's not a lecture. It's an immersive theater production. So um, we're just aiming to create a theatric musical experience here. 
На самом деле мне очень интересен этот проект, потому что я сама родом из Украины. В прошлом году я приехала в Соединенные Штаты, и этот проект для меня очень ну, важен. Сказать. Я, я хочу использовать в этом проекте натуральные ткани, светлые палитры, но с использованием украинских фольклорных элементов, каких-то традиционных украшений, возможно, обычаев использования, и показать в этом проекте украинские народные традиции, ну, и фольклор. Да, это интересно, я буду, возможно, будем использовать натуральные ткани, да, цветы, сена, венки в украинском стиле. Я думаю, что мы сделаем приблизительно костюм в одной стилистике, это будет как бы, чтобы это узнаваемый персонаж, он будет расти как бы из детства во взрослый возраст, и как бы костюм приблизительно будет в одной стилистике, либо даже очень похож. Во-первых, у него будут какие-то национальные фартухи, это, возможно, косынка, возможно, венок, намыста, эти бусы украинские, ну и, может, ленты там, уже посмотрим mm -hmm. по, по артистам. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Amir Zidani. I'm uh, an artist and designer, and I'm collaborating here with uh, Floating Towers on this wonderful project. Um, part of the work I'm doing is both conceptual and visual, with, uh, with set design, with prop design, and with the conceptual development of the project itself. Um, I should say that in sense of the work that we did, trying to define what it is that we are doing here, there are certain key words, I think, to this. And part of it was already suggested by Mati's <clears throat> um, exposition, which is to say that it is a, it's an exploration of Ukraine as a, sphere of encounters, cultural encounters, historical encounters, as a space that is occupied by multiple nations, multiple peoples, um, most of which have long gone, um, but their shadows remain <laughs> in that sense that they are both, uh, you know, in the simple sense, biologically, the ancestors of today's, you know, modern Ukrainians, but also through etymologies, through customs, through music, through all of these things, all these past inhabitants are, have a presence. And whether it's forgotten or acknowledged, it's there. And it's something that is, 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 is of interest to us when we try to kind of dive deep into what is Ukraine, what is this place? And <clears throat> how do we get to know it better and to kind of, uh, and again, to detach it from that chauvinistic <laughs> attempt at amnesia that is this war, beyond the massive physical uh, suffering and destruction, there is also a, an attempt at cultural genocide of Ukraine. So, you know, um, whether it's Hazars or Alans or Scythians or ancient Iranian peoples that roamed the, the steppes of, of Ukraine, or is it more modern Polish, Lithuanian, Jewish, Tatar, Turkish, Viking, all these, uh, all these encounters, these are, these are peoples who, who meet each other, who influence each other, who create new things and new identities throughout history. And to, to wipe that out is to deprive Ukrainians of that, of, of their identity, of their sense of selfhood and community. <clears throat> so, but, but again, this is not necessarily just a, a defense of Ukrainian identity. It's also a celebration. It's also an artistic and creative endeavor. And as such, it can be experienced without the didactic, you know, lecturing. Yeah. A lot of the works come from Parjanov's film, but not exclusively. It's a, but it deals with a kind of folk reality that is pre-modern and pre-national, 
where all these kind of spiritual continuities are lingering, where material reality is, presents itself as a veil that needs to be interpreted, that is, a, that is a vehicle for higher reality, whether it's through religious symbols, through rituals, through folk religion, um, and through music, and through visual art. So we'll see you in Adams Theater in Adams, Massachusetts, July 1st and 2nd. Thank you very much. My name is Joe Wheaton. I'm a visual artist. I make sculpture and do video projections. And uh, Maddie and I came together at a sculpture park where he was doing music. I was doing some visual projections on one of the buildings there. And um, I was very impressed with the array of people that he assembled around him. And recently he proposed working on this uh, together and I jumped at the opportunity. Um, I'm very impressed with the other people working on it. It is, they are so different a group than the Americans I work with regularly, you know, who I love. But um, these refugees have such a different experience and as an American I've felt very frustrated with the our relationship to the world and the inability to really feel like one could affect what is possible. And um, anyhow, so it's wonderful to collaborate with people who have similar sensibilities and very different experience. And uh, anyhow, I'm really looking forward to uh, the production and I hope everybody will come July 1st and 2nd to the Adams Theater.